Hey, Robin Robbins here, founder of TechnologyMarketingToolkit.com, where we specialize in working with managed service providers, VAR system integrators, or anyone selling outsourced IT services and support to do uh, more marketing, better marketing, get more clients, and, uh, and implement more sales generating ideas. And if you remember recently, I polled my customers, all my clients, and we sent out an email and we asked, what would be the single most important thing you would like me to cover at the upcoming roadshow, which is on this, this page that you're, you're seeing here. And the number one question that came back was list building. The question was, how do I find or get or build a list of highly qualified prospects? So what you see behind me here is uh, not my handiwork. I, I actually drew it on a piece of paper like a napkin and got my uh, graphic designer to, to do this and how so Mike he's awesome so anyway I got him to draw this out to try and explain to you how the process of list building works because I think most people when they say they want a list what they mean is they want an email list okay and um, that's not necessarily always the best way to go about prospecting you don't have everybody's email address and I know you want to build that email list but but let me run through and explain to you how do you build your email list or just how do you build your prospect list okay so what you're gonna see down here is like this little box here and I'm gonna sort of mess up his awesome graphic design stuff and try and do my own but this here Let's say this box represents your house list. Now these are people that are on your list who have gotten there because they've either purchased something from you or they've met with you or reached out to you. Maybe they registered um, for a webinar that you did or a seminar. Maybe you met them at a trade show and they gave you their business card. They were referred to you. And those people, um, the, your house list here is gonna be made up of just what I have here, qualified prospects, because hopefully you're not keeping people on your list that you don't want to sell to and if you are that start there <laughs> um, you know it's like having a party and not liking anybody there and it's like well dummy you're the one who invited them so um, anyway it should be qualified prospects on your list clients and then raving fans and raving fans clients are anybody who's written you a check and raving fans are the ones who buy all all the time they take your advice they pay top dollar um, they they refer in abundance they're they're probably a very small percentage of your list probably 10 to 20 percent of your list 80% is going to be clients and then you've got these qualified prospects. So this is the list you want to go about building and hopefully on that list you've got their email address, you've got their phone, you've got their mailing address and maybe you even have a connection to them via social media. All right, which is something you want to do. You want to make sure you're reaching out to your clients, your raving fans, your hot prospects via social media and connecting with them on things like LinkedIn or getting them to follow your Facebook page and, and so forth. Um, but email is something you actually got to get permission from. Now, there are companies out there that will sell you or rent you email lists. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it because if they will give you the email address of somebody without that person giving you permission to market to them, that's spam. And I don't think that's the best way to start out a relationship with somebody. I don't recommend it. Now, there are places where you can get a, a web community or a list owner to email their list on your behalf. That's different. That's not you getting the email addresses. But email addresses have to be earned, if you will. You've got to get permission marketing. You've got to attract those people and provide them content or information or value in some way where they want to give you their email address and they want to hear from you on a consistent basis. And so when you get their email address, so some of your qualified prospects are going to fall into that category. Some of them you may not. They may have opted out of your list. So now you just have to rely on phone and mail or social media to reach those people but you should definitely have the email phone address and social media of your clients and your raving fans now one way of building your list of course is through referrals and that's where you get your raving fans to refer more qualified prospects and clients to refer more prospects so you can this can be a, a um, if done right can be a self fueling type of of list it can grow all right and then you use nurture marketing again using email phone 
mailing, social media to get these qualified prospects to be clients, obviously, and move these clients down to being raving fans, okay? So that's one part or one element of list building. But again, most people, when they come to me, their, their house list like this is really small. They might have 20, 50, maybe 100 total on their list. And what they're trying to do is get more prospects on that list. So what you see up here is like a big sort of cloud. So here's the way, I want, the way I want you to think about list building. If we looked at every single business entity, nonprofits, retail, I mean every business entity in your town or your market area, it's probably in the thousands. Now, if you're in Nashville, um, I know it's easily 10,000 plus that you could get. If you're in a bigger town, like you're in a Chicago or in LA or New York City, I mean, it's gonna be four, five, six times that amount. Now, the problem is when you've got all these businesses, obviously they're not all qualified, they're not all gonna outsource IT support to you. There's only gonna be a small subset of the entire universe that you could potentially sell to that actually could be a good qualified prospect for you that you want on your house list. So how do you go out in this mass of people this huge um, ever moving entity because companies are coming online they're they're becoming prospects for you there's people who are closing their doors or they're hiring their own IT departments and, and dropping off the prospect train if you will so how do you take this big mass of of of, of randomness and and organize it because for most of you that are watching this 10,000, you wouldn't be able to afford to even market to them. So to do an effective campaign, let's say you do one direct mail campaign, well, it's gonna cost you somewhere around twenty to $30,000 if you mailed everybody once or twice, and you don't wanna just mail them once or twice, you wanna follow with phone follow-up, and you're gonna to have to have repetition, so it can get really expensive if you're just shotgun approach mailing the masses. You don't even have that budget, and it's not something I recommend. So the way you gotta think about your target market is first of all, you gotta know who your ideal customer is. So you gotta have that niche. And niche doesn't necessarily mean just vertical. It means you could say our niche or our ideal client is someone between 10 and 50 computers with a server who's looking to outsource their IT support. Maybe they're fast growth, maybe they're certain technological aspects to how they run their business. But anyway, you've gotta know who your ideal customer is because you can't build this list unless you know who you want on the list, okay? And you can't be vague and say, well, any business between five and 200 computers. That, that's not true either, because if you think about it, anybody with, I mean, a, a business owner with five computers is way different in the way they, what they need and what they're looking for, um, all those things, how you communicate with them. A business owner has five computers is totally different than someone who has 200, okay? So, when you go into your market, what you've got to look for are like groups of people. And I, I'll use the term lists, but really what they are groups of people. So like LinkedIn groups. Out on LinkedIn, you can actually search on and connect with groups of people who have similar um, values or interests and so forth. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the video following this. Info USA. Info USA, you could go out to Info USA, you could purchase a list from Info USA and um, you know you could market to it but I'll tell you right now info whether it's zap data info USA or any of the other type of list purchase companies that you can rent from here's a little secret they all pull from the same databases so they have different brand names on them but it's the same crappy data and most of its 40 to 60 percent out of date now I'm not saying don't use those lists but you just got to know what you're dealing with um, you might be able to get a telemarketing list. Maybe it's a list of phone numbers. Maybe you could run radio ads. People who listen to a particular radio station are a list. They're a list of subscribers and they consume that media through listening to it, but they're still a list. Facebook fans, they are groups of people on Facebook that you can connect with. Trade publications that are in your particular niche that you might be going after, newspapers, web communities, um, like in the IT industry, it could be somewhere like the Varga if you're selling to other managed service providers like I am, you could go to that web community, trade associations. So, I mean, I just put a few up here. Believe me, you could go to a website called the SRDS. And that website is sort of the big honking database of all the lists that you could potentially rent or purchase. And they're everything from, they, there are some that sell email, phone, mailing addresses and so forth. And literally there are hundreds of thousands of lists. 
So the idea is when you, you've got this big mass of ways of connecting with people, what you need to use is direct response marketing. Now, the type of marketing depends on the type of list and using the appropriate media. So for example, for the, with Facebook, you don't use direct mail to connect with people on Facebook. It doesn't make sense, right? Or you don't use direct mail to, co to connect with radio listeners. If you want to connect with the radio listeners, you run an ad on the radio station. Those people respond to your ad. They then become qualified prospects and enter on your list. Facebook, you would run Facebook ads or you would invite your customers. Those people would connect with you on Facebook and through offline direct response, or not offline, but online direct response, you'd drive those people maybe to a web page. You would capture their information. They would add on your list. Maybe you can rent a telemarketing list or you get Info USA list and you do a direct mail campaign. And that direct mail campaign, you're gonna get a response. Those people are now gonna be added to your list trade associations, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're trying to reach the newspaper list of people, you would probably be running an ad. Um, so the, the key to this is you've got to use, like I said, what's called direct response marketing. And you use the appropriate media, whether it's email, direct mail, ads, online, et cetera, to pull these people from the masses and get them to come forward and say, I'm interested, I'm a qualified prospect, and enter on your list and give you their email, give you their phone number, give you their address so you can sell to them, so you can connect with them, all right? So another key you gotta understand is when you do all this marketing, most of the marketing, you're only getting a two to 3% response rate. So that seems really low, but that's actually considered pretty dang good. So if you're doing any kind of direct mail or telemarketing and, or radio and all of these different groups of people or lists have different effective rates. So you'll find that people you connect with or prospects you connect with on Facebook, not so great prospects. I, pr I promise when you start, if you're running Facebook ads, it's not to say you can't get any business from it, but very low chance. So we're not even talking two to 3% response. We're talking like a 0.01%. Um, if you're using LinkedIn groups, you're going to see a much higher response. Now you're going to see more of a two, 3% because these are business owners and these business owners are going to connect with you there. Um, direct mail could be anywhere to two to 5%. If you're doing radio ads, the percentages are going to be way lower because you're, if you look at how many people actually hear your message and how many respond, that's going to be a lower response percentage, but you don't want to get too hung up on response percentages. What you want to keep in mind is ROI, return on investment. If what you're spending is giving you a good solid return on your marketing dollars, you want to keep doing it. And of course, if it's not giving you that return, you don't want to keep doing it. Now at the roadshow, I'm going to explain how you do this. How do you set up educational direct response marketing campaigns to get people from the masses here to step forward? Um, and say they want to do business with you, so they turn into qualified prospects, and how do you run the ads in the right way uh, to make sure you're only attracting the ones that you want to attract? How do you really get double to triple the response rates on almost all the media that you might be running here? And that's what I'm going to talk about at the Roadshow. Now, as I promised in my email, one of the ways that you can prospect that is 100% legit, spam-free, it um, bypasses the gatekeeper. You can be very selective on who you target. So if you want CEOs of uh, CPA firms in the Nashville area with a certain company size, you can actually do that. And that's using LinkedIn. Now, at the Roadshow, I'm gonna go into a deep dive in this, but following this little video I'm giving you right here, I'm gonna show you how you can use LinkedIn to target, laser target, those high protein, high pro profile prospects that you want to get into but have never been able to, and it bypasses the gatekeeper. It has a very high response rate. Best of all, it's free, and like I said, it's 100% legitimate. And I've been using it, some of my clients have been using it. It has been working like gangbusters. So um, anyway, following this video right now, I'm going to wrap up here and we're going to jump over to my laptop and I'm going to show you how to do prospecting with LinkedIn. So let's jump over to that video now. Okay, so here we are over at LinkedIn. And as you can see, I'm at my profile page. And if you're going to be using LinkedIn to prospect, one of the things you absolutely want to do is make sure you have a very good profile page. And there are a number of things you want to 
get right on this page, but I'm going to point out a few key ones. So one of them is, is um, not too long ago, LinkedIn allowed you to put some sort of design graphic behind your LinkedIn page. And as you can see, I've got my headline banner um, specializing in proven highly effective marketing campaigns and sales generating strategies for IT service providers. So immediately as someone comes to my page, they can see my logo, the branding, they recognize me because it's part of the branding we have and they know what we do and who we do it for. So that's one. Also, you'll notice I've got a professional headshot. That's going to be another really critical part or component to being successful on LinkedIn. And I um, read somewhere that people with a professional LinkedIn headshot, like a photo, a real photo, not the shadow man placeholder they give you, uh, have a seven times more likely chance of getting connections and people connecting to them on LinkedIn. So you don't want to have the photo of you and your wife on your wedding day where you're in a tux and you just cut her out of the photo and put that up there. That's not a good LinkedIn uh, picture. Now remember, LinkedIn has been awesome with search engine results. So if uh, you go and you Google your name, you're going to find out that um, your name in your connection or your LinkedIn profile is going to be coming up quite often. So you don't want to have just the, the shadow man picture, which is no good. You, you don't want to have a, an unprofessional photo. That's not going to help you either. So those two areas are really important. Another area you want to pay attention to is is your is your title here. And as you can see, again, I've made it keyword dense and I've also sort of made it descriptive. So I've got IT marketing and sales expert to manage service providers VARS, author of the Technology Marketing Toolkit CEO. And so whatever your title is here, you might want to be um, IT specialist to small medical practices in the Nashville area or whatever it is you do. So you want to pay attention to your title. Uh, another area you want to pay a lot of attention to is your summary. And you can see that here. Um, you want to have it to be very descriptive. As you can see, I've got my Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube channels there. I've got some testimonials and some other attachments that you can see here in my profile. You can put videos, you can put case studies. Um, all kinds of, of uh, marketing materials up here if you want uh, that that can also really help you with your LinkedIn profile and connecting and prospecting uh, people on LinkedIn. Uh, now, as you go down here, you've got ex the experience area. You want to make sure you really use this as a way of uh, describing the various different things and specialties you have. Now, what I've done is for each um, new product that I've launched, we've got it as as a, an area of experience, okay? So we've got that, we've got recommendations then. So I've got one for the Cloud Integrator Blueprint, the Toolkit, the BDR in a Box. As you can see, I keep going down and then you see the rest of my professional experience. Um, there's also projects, so you can, um, in, in my case, what I'm doing, I'm showcasing the Better Your Best uh, contestants. So these are killer case studies. And I've got that up here as a project. And I've then connected with other team members on LinkedIn. So these are actually my clients who were better your best contestants. Any publications that you've authored. So I've been, um, we've actually authored a couple of books. And uh, the Tech Multiplier, both of them have become, become best-selling books. So I've got that up there with the other authors. And then skills and endorsements as well. But the area that's going to be really most important for you is going to be this top area, the summary, your title, your banner, your headshot. That's going to be number one. So when you start prospecting on LinkedIn, you want to make sure you have that right because you don't want to go out and start prospecting and have people click on your profile and your profile's incomplete and you got shadow man and you got a really, you know, looks like an amateur photo there. You want to really come across as a true professional. Now, once you got that done, the next thing you want to do is start connecting with potential prospects on LinkedIn. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. And so uh, one of the things that you're going to want to do is upgrade your account to like a business plus type service. And I can tell you LinkedIn is extremely 
quirky. So I, I'm going to tell you, I can't even show you where to go to upgrade your account. I mean, I could show you here on mine, but what I'm going to see is going to be different for you. I promise you LinkedIn is very quirky. We just had a workshop at one of my producers club meetings and we had about 300 people in the room and everybody was seeing different things. So um, when you go to upgrade your account, you're going to see various different things. But one of the things you want to look for is the ability to do an advanced search. It's also very cool to see, um, to sign up for who's viewed your profile because you can tell who's been looking at your profile. And if it's a prospect that you've been chasing for a while and they're looking at your profile, that might be a sign that they're ready to buy. Um, you want to get some in-mail messages because that's a way you can connect with potential prospects. And then you also want to make sure that you get advanced search. Now, my current executive plan will give me that. Um, if you need more help in, um, figuring out sort of what these different levels are, you can contact LinkedIn and get it sorted out. But let me show you what you want to do so that way you know what level to connect with. And that is you go up to here to this advanced search. When you click on advanced search, what's going to come up is one of the best searches uh, engines that you can get. So, so think about it. LinkedIn has millions of people that are up on LinkedIn and using it. And a lot of them are CEOs. People tend to think of it just as a job search place. But really, there's there are um, a lot of CEOs that are up here. So let's say, for example, um, I am looking for the CEOs of small businesses in Nashville because I want to sell them IT services and support. So what I can do is I can do this advanced people search. And under location, I'm going to add um, Nashville. Now, I can tell you that by you start typing in your, t in your town and it'll come up. By doing this kind of general location search, you're going to get better results than if you go down here and use the postal code um, search okay so just sort of because if I let's say I want to put my let's say I put my zip code in it'll give you a mile radius and um, you know it's not going to give you as as good a results as if you do this sort of greater Nashville area search so let's say we start there and then let's say I want to go to industry. Maybe I want to specialize just in um, accountants. Maybe that's my niche and I like accountants. Um, let's say I also like anybody who's in banking. Um, that's always really a good uh, vertical for me to sell IT services to. Let's suppose, um, I don't know, we don't want to go over computer support because that'll bring up your own competitors. You don't want that. Um, but let's say financial services, let's say that the banking, financial services and accounting, those are really my, the industries that I want to target. And then what I want to do is go over here and go to seniority level because I'm looking for a CEOs because that's who I want to sell to. So I would choose CEO, maybe partner and owner, because that's kind of that C level executive and then company size. Let's say I tend to specialize in companies that have anywhere from 10 to 200 or 10 to 100 computers. So if I click on these, I can um, profile that. So now you can see I've got a very advanced search of accounting, financial, banking firms in the greater Nashville area. I'm looking for the owner and it's a relatively small to medium business. And then I'm going to search on this. Now, before I do, up here I could actually save this search, but let me, let me click this search. Now, what you're going to see brought up here, I've got 585 results, and these are all various different people who could be potential prospects for me if that if, if I was looking for people to sell the in the criteria I just showed you, right? So as you can see, some of these people, I, I'm not even connected with them. So now we know sort of what the list is, and I can actually click here and, and say save this search, and I can call it uh, accounting and financial services, um, can't spell, um, and I can get, get an, a, a weekly alert. So as people come on and join LinkedIn and they update their profile and they meet the search criteria, um, that'll give me that, uh, an email me an update. So you can do it monthly, you can do it weekly, you can do it daily, um, and then you can just, you know, click create or save. So now every time somebody who fits that profile that I just created comes on to LinkedIn, it's going to notify me, which is very, very cool. Like you think about it, LinkedIn is a self updating database of all these people that you can connect with professional people. So then the next question is, how do we connect with these people? Now there's 
there's four ways, primary ways that you can connect with people on LinkedIn. So obviously, um, I can click on connect right here. Now, I'm going to tell you, you don't want to try and connect with people. Don't do it here. So let me go into his account. Because if I click connect, it'll send that connect request. But um, if I try and connect with Brian and I don't know Brian, what happens is Brian is probably going to say, I don't know Robin and she's going to mark it either as spam or I don't know Robin. And that's going to count against me. So you don't want to send connect requests to people that you don't know because your your account is going to get throttled. That's what it's called. It's called getting throttled in LinkedIn. And if you get throttled, then that means you're going to have to put somebody's email address in before you connect with them, which is a major pain in the butt. And since people use various different email addresses, you might have their email, but you might not have the one they're using on LinkedIn. And it's going to cause a major issue for you. So just make sure you can, you only connect with people that you, that you truly know. So that's going to kind of put a damper on things, but, but hang with me because there's other ways you can connect with prospects without a connect request, but that's one way. You can also send an in-mail, okay? Now, an in-mail is going to cost you about $10. They're not cheap. So um, if you're going to send somebody an in-mail, so if I click send Brian an in-mail, it's going to pop up a screen and it's going to allow me to put my phone number. It's going to allow me to kind of categorize what this request is, the subject line, and a message. And I'm not going to do it because... I don't know this dude and I don't want to waste $10, $10 on him. But if he was a prospect, I might want to send this message. Now, the good thing is when you send the message to your prospect this way, if they don't respond, that $10 actually gets credited back to your account. So that's a good thing. You can use, um, you can use that for prospecting if you like. Now, they, like I said, there's the in-mail that you can send. There is the connect request. And if Brian happened to be, let's say, on in the open network. So LinkedIn also has an open link network. And if, if somebody belongs to that, then basically anybody can connect with them and you don't have to know them. So not as many people are... are um, in that open link network. So, uh, and I'm looking here, I don't see any of these search people that came up that, that fit that criteria. But um, if you do see it, there'll be a little icon here for the um, open link. And uh, I can't see any here. But um, anyway, small group of people will be that. That's another way. The final way that you can connect with prospects on LinkedIn is through groups. Okay, so let me show you, show this out, check this out. So when you go into LinkedIn, and you have these this interest okay so i could even go into some of these to find out what groups these people are on so let's say this is the chief information officer at paytech solutions man that's somebody i really would like to connect with so i'm going to look at his profile and i'm going to look and see if there's any groups that he belongs to so right here there's a cto chief technology offer officer network so i let's see that no let's see here there's a network nashville and there's a technology executive network so as you can see these are groups that this guy if he was a prospect for me that he actually belongs to maybe i want to do so what i would do is i just would click join and what that'll do is that'll send a request to that group to see if they will allow me to join now um, it looks like this one they're just letting anybody join it's got 19,000 members as you can see up here and so hey now I'm in the group it looks like they're just accepting new members some some groups are like that some groups are set up so that you can join anybody can join some require pre-approval but it looks like this one is just an open group and anybody can join so now let's say that dude is in this group and I want to prospect him what I do is I click here and I click on members all right and what members is going to do is it's going to bring up a list of everybody who is in this group and what it'll do is it'll show you people that you have as a first connection to so first connections that's cool maybe these are prospects but most likely they're going to be people that I already know like I know Ed Stringfellow um, I know some of these other people and um, I'm on a first connection basis so if I wanted to send these people a message and I wanted to prospect them no big deal because I'm already connected to them but like I said the key on LinkedIn is making sure that um, you're able to, to prospect people that that you don't have that first degree connection to so let me let me dig a little bit deeper into this uh, this group and let me see if I can bring up somebody who's a second connection so there we go 
All right. Um, what I would do, so let's say I wanted to say Chris Pritchard, maybe he is a good prospect for me. Then what I could do is click here and I could click send message. Now, again, I'm not going to do it because I don't know this dude, but, um, I can send Chris now because I'm part of this group, I can send him a message and what LinkedIn will do is send an email, my message here via email to Chris. And what I could do in here is, um, you know, I could prospect them. So let's say I was selling computer supports. So I could put computer problems, um, or I could maybe say, are, are, are you having computer problems? So that might, you know, hey, Chris, um, if you're constantly having computer problems, problems, I can help. And then you might go on blah, 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 put a link in here to a landing page or something like that and send message. Now, again, I'm not going to do this, okay, because I don't know the dude. Um, but this is a way, this send message is a way where you can um, join groups that your prospects belong to and send them messages and prospect with them. And I'm telling you, this is a, an extremely powerful tool. And if you wanted to, since I'm in the members area, let's say I wanted to, um, to only talk to CEOs. So I, or, you know, if you know who exactly you want to look for. So let, let me put in CEO in this members section, because that's who I want to prospect. And again, it's always going to bring up your first level connections, but see here, here's Paul Van Housen, I guess you would say. So he's an entrepreneur, technologist, healthcare innovator, greater Nashville area. And again, if I wanted to prospect Paul, I could click here, send message, and I could, I could do this through all the people here that are in this group that I think might be a really good prospect for me. And I'll show you a, a real live example. So when you go up to, um, through LinkedIn, you click here on groups. Okay. Now, when you click on groups, it's going to show you groups that you belong to. Um, you can also search for groups if you want. I mean, as you can see, I belong to 52 different groups, um, but you can click down here. I'm not going to do it, but you can click down here and find groups that your prospects might belong to. And like I showed you a moment ago, when you do that advanced people search, you can start looking at some of your prospects and see what groups they belong to, and that'll direct you on which groups you should join. Okay. So here's all the groups I'm members. I'm a member of. So let me let me just hop in here to CompTIA and um, this is a member association that I belong to and let's say I join this group and now I go over to members and this would be a group that I would want to prospect in by the way and I can see there's like 15,000 members okay so let's say I'm looking for CEOs and anybody who's going to be a member of CompTIA typically is going to be in the IT industry. So that makes them a, a pretty good prospect for me. But um, let me put CEO in here because I want to talk to the CEOs of companies that, um, you know, that maybe not clients of mine. So again, you're going to see they always bring up the first connections, but let me dig a little bit deeper here and let me go further into the search results and let's see if I can find a CEO, somebody who's a second connection. So, you know, as you can see, now I'm into the second degree connections. Um, if I wanted to prospect these people um, on LinkedIn, I wouldn't be connected to them. So I'd have to send them an in-mail or something like that. But because I'm part of the group, I can do this. So let's see here. Um, uh, let me just on-site IT solutions provider. There's a guy in Sydney, Australia, uh, tech checkers. It kind of looks like somebody who could be a good prospect for me. And, you know, if I wanted to, I could I can uh, check on his site here and I can see, okay, he does network design. Um, you know, he's got his summary here of what he does, network troubleshooting and repair, et cetera, et cetera. So let me click the back button here and go back to that group in, uh, in CompTIA. All right. So let me just send this dude a message. So, um, I, I've already got one, a message that I have used for prospecting before. Um, let me, let me, uh, let me put this marketing, uh, or let me just, the subject line, let me put, uh, need more MSP clients. Let me just kind of put that. Now I'm going to cut and paste a message. All right. So this guy, his name is Charlie actually. So I want to make sure you get the name, right? Um, Charlie would be useful to have a marketing action plan that could help you find more high quality customers for over a decade. I've worked with over 5,000, actually that should be 7,000 MSPs, solution provider, system integrators to get more better clients. In some cases, I've been able to help them double, triple their revenues. 
and I'm not sure if my services are right for you, fit for you, so here's what I'd like to do or propose. For free, I'll give you a strategic marketing plan to show you how to quickly increase sales and secure more profitable clients. There's no charge and no hidden agendas. That's all required. 30, 60 minute phone call with one of my consultants. And during this consultation, I'll give you my free ro ro marketing roadmap you can keep for free. If you love it and would like to become a client to help you execute, monetize and profit from it, ASAP will knock it out of the park. If I promise, if not, you can still keep the plan and we part as friends. What do you think? I've posted the full details here. So I've got a URL link with a sales letter page that I send them to and I can just click send message. Okay. Now, once I've done that, what it's going to do is send this guy that prospecting message. And now what's cool about that is I didn't have to send a connect request because there's a chance he could say, I don't know you, Robin, and just not connect with me. And that would count against me and get my account throttled. Um, he's not part of the open link network, so I couldn't have messaged him that way. And I didn't want to spend $10 to send him an email because that can get kind of expensive. So what I'm showing you here is how you can go into and find groups on LinkedIn where your prospects would hang out. And you can use those groups to prospect potential clients, all right? Now, here's the whole big kicker, okay? The messaging and how you do this, there's a lot more details to it. And I've given you the very quick summary of how to do this. And what I would like you to do is make sure that you come and join me at the IT Marketing Roadshow. So I'm gonna bring up this page here and there's, so there's a little bit of a pitch. Um, not really, because it's actually a free two-day fast implementation workshop and it's for my clients. Now, if you're not a client, it's only $299, it's dirt cheap. And if you don't think you got value out of the two days, I'll give you your money back. But one of the things that we're gonna talk about at this roadshow is list building. I'm gonna talk about how do you build a list, where do you start? What makes a good list? And not only how you build a list, but also how do you stay connected with those people so they want to get your messages? I'll also be going into how to use LinkedIn in a more a deeper dive um, at the roadshow. So if you liked what I just showed you and you want more information, you want to get the details on that, I'm going to go into that at this roadshow. And I'm even going to share with you a resource of a, a company that I use that does prospecting using LinkedIn. So there's a company who will actually do all this work for you and they even guarantee the appointments. It's a, a resource that we use and uh, I'm going to share that with you. But even if you didn't want to hire them, the during the session, one of the things that we're going to cover in this implementation marketing workshop is list building and prospecting and how do you use the latest, newest, coolest things to get in front of those prospects. So make sure you go over to itmarketingroadshow.com. Go ahead and pick one of these locations and register for it. You just click by registering now, this big red button in case you didn't see it. It's right over here to the right. You just click on it and then that's going to take you to a page where it's got the, the details on this. And if you own the one of the products, you're a client of mine, it's a $100 refundable deposit. The $100 just holds your spot and then it gets refunded to you after the event. And then if you're not a, a client of mine, just click on the non-product owners option for each of these five workshops. And as you can see, the first 50 are going to get an advanced sales training for IT services, which is a DVD of a session that I did um, with marketing templates. You're going to find it to be extremely valuable in overcoming common sales objections and closing more sales. And that's going to happen. That's going to actually be given to the first 50 to register at each event. Okay. So go over again, IT Marketing Roadshow. Make sure you register and join me. If you liked what you just saw, we're going to get into even more detail and how you do this, how you're successful with it. And it's dirt cheap. It's guaranteed to give you a high amount of value. So go ahead, register, and I'll see you at the roadshow.